What we're going to cover today is why live video is so important. We'll look at what it's good for, what the platforms are and how to get started on those platforms, and the plan you should go into live video with every time you try to do one. Uh, because live video is a little bit different than pre-recording it, um, and things can go horribly wrong if you don't have a plan of how to attack that particular event. So first of all, why do we love live video? Why are we going to bother doing live video in the first place? Is it just a hassle? If you're someone who doesn't really like being on camera, before I started doing these webinars, I struggled with this a lot. I didn't really like being on camera much at all. But then as you get more used to it and more, I suppose, um, uh, more efficient and effective at it, then you find you actually start to enjoy it a little bit. So why do we look at doing live video? Because basically it's three times more engaging online than what produced video is. So this is when we look at, say, on Facebook, if you're doing a live video, there's three times more engagement that tends to occur rather than when you're doing it on just plain everyday recorded video that you've put up there as a post. But even more so then, it's five times more engaging than photo posts. So just posting, posting um, photos of your, of your products or photos of your services or the things that you do is nowhere near as engaging as something which is live video. Now, if this is not the, um, the yoga video I was hoping to show, I was actually hoping to show one of my friends, Sharon, who has converted her in-person yoga practice in the Northern Territory into a very, very large group of people who now do this as a live thing online right across Australia. So it's, it's a yoga at Pilates for mature women. So she's found her niche. She's found how to do it. She's found how to be engaging on it. And together we helped set her up with the right kind of equipment and the right kind of confidence to get her going because she was never someone who ever, ever imagined herself being on live video. But here she is today really doing well at it. The other reason why I think we should do it is because it's the opportunity for you to be the most human you can be in an online platform because there's no editing, there's no filters, there's no Instagram to make everyone look different somehow. You're going to be yourself warts and all. And that's that level of authenticity and what really brings one human to connect so well with another. And you are, you're able to give real answers in real time. And the interaction of um, when you're working with live video is, is just, there's no other sort of way you can do it so well. Sure, there's things like Clubhouse and there's um, Twitter spaces where you can set up, you know, Q Q and a sort of things with, with audio only. But when you add a live video component, it really just, um, you know, people do appreciate that it puts you on the spot. And if you're able to answer those questions that are coming in, or even just be in that position where you're confident enough about your product and your service to answer those questions that they're coming in, then you're in a place where I suppose people will appreciate even more what it is you're doing. Another way that it's really, really useful, and I suppose this is an extreme example, we saw a lot of this in the last two years, is it's for events that not everyone can attend. So it's things like weddings, it's like launches, openings, special guests, special occasions, where not everyone can come along to these things. So you're giving them an opportunity to be part of the crowd, be part of the joy and be part of the interaction of that without necessarily being there. I've seen this used particularly well when there was memorials and funerals as well, which is something which has been particularly um, you know, in huge demand in the last two years. So for a business, um, it may not be that you're going to be hosting weddings and funerals, but you could be hosting particular events, uh, things like this. This is a live video we're doing now. I'm not doing it through a uh, platform for social media because this is a particular kind of platform that needs to be done through uh, the government. So we need to be able to collect some details. Otherwise, you know, I'd love to be able to press that button and send this straight out to Facebook as well and be able to share this with other people because it would give me that option to have a lot of feedback. Although even in a Zoom call, I've got a message here from Kat saying I've made some great points so I can refer back to those comments as they're coming in. And other places is really good for is industry news and updates. So if you're someone who's um, a thought leader or some kind of leader in your industry or an association of industry, then your ability to be able to share that news and those updates could be really important. In fact, you know, I don't think that um, our, our premiers or our chief ministers will be anywhere near as effective in getting across their COVID messages if they didn't have Facebook Live to do it through. I think that's where most people watch it these days. 
And it's also a wonderful chance for you to share your culture. So whatever your culture may be, whether you're Indigenous, whether you're from India, whether you're from Southeast Asia or Europe or the Americas or Africa, or even just from the suburbs of, of Brisbane or Perth or Darwin or Alice Springs, it doesn't matter where you're from, everybody has got a different culture they can share. And particularly through your business, you're able to bring that color and culture into your business as well and share some of the joy of those amazing celebrations and festivals that you have with your customers and potential customers as well. So what else is live video really, really good for? Well, live video is particularly good for tutorials and classes. I think that's probably what I use live video as a consumer most for. I think I use that more, um, yeah, for, with, with, with how-tos and lessons and all that thing, because I find that I think that, I guess, the, um, the, the ability to be able to get new skills and new things through, um, you know, for the people who really know what they're doing, I think that's a fantastic way for us to be able to so I think my um, microphone just dropped out there for a second and I'm back in. So it's a, a magnificent ability for you to be able to, to learn a new skill or to teach other people a new skill, particularly in the times where there's not as many in-person events. I know that um, we're on a combination of lockdown, uh, lockout, sorry, not lockdown, lockout here in Darwin. Um, so we're not able to do quite as many uh, full open uh, public events, although we are allowed to if you're vaccinated. You, you might have to find a way around these sort of things. Um, um, the other things that really, really shine out for me is not just the tutorials, not just those things, but also the ability to be able to do introductions to your team, to the people in your business. So if you're talking about whether it's your, your son or your daughter who's doing something with your business, or whether it's a new team member that you want to introduce to people, or if you're a coach who tends to have uh, people dealing with just yourself, then the ability to be able to share other team members and other people in your team or in your family business is a really powerful way of connecting with people that goes way beyond just another video and a talking head. It brings in a little bit of family value and a little bit of um, humanity to what you're bringing to your customers. Product launches are probably one of the biggest ways that this is used. And I think this is because simply that you can do this live, you can do it with a large amount of people and the kind of push that you'll be getting um, into your uh, your customer base is going to be much larger uh, when you put it across as a notification that you're going live on Facebook, uh, particularly if other people are looking to um, just, you know, advertise things through just events or through photo posts or, or you know, even prepared video posts. A product launch done live and then then done through maybe an event being set up in Facebook first is a great way to put it out to people that this is coming up. It's worth seeing. It's worth taking some time out for. Here's when it's on. And those people who say that they want to be in that product launch get reminded as you're going live so that they know that it's about to happen and they won't miss out on it. So it's a great way for those exclusive specials and, and exclusive promotions you want to run as part of your product launch launch. And of course, client and community Q&As are amazing for this. So for instance, if you're like this guy, you're an expert with cameras, then you can, and you're selling cameras and you're in a camera store or you're a camera repair person or a photographer, you have the ability to be able to do a Q&A with people who are very curious to know what it is you do, how you do it, and how they can better use their cameras and their equipment as well. Your expertise is a commodity that people are actually willing to spend time learning. So if you can bring people into your expertise and show them a little bit of your world. It's a great way to be the person who happens to, um, you know, be the one who's chosen for the paid work later. And just, you know, sometimes I go that I get questions about this and saying, look, if giving away all my stuff, isn't that pretty much giving people an excuse not to pay? Trust me, there's probably nothing that you know that can't be Googled. So the reality is if they come through to you in the first place, it's better that they see it from your point of view and learn your name and your face and get to know, like, and trust you than they are to just go to Google and get their answers anyway. Yes, you can just go to Google to get those answers, but if they come to you, it means they already value you. And in terms of what a sales funnel works like, 
they're already halfway down the funnel because they chose to get that information from you. Just this morning, I got a message. Now, I'm very active in a, in a group um, for Facebook that I they actually contract me for uh, advice to other people who are using the Facebook family of apps for business. And I answered a question this morning because I thought, yeah, it's a good idea to do that because it's an answer. It's a question I can answer. I did. And then just half an hour later, I had a private message from that person asking if there's a way that they can pay an hourly rate for me to get advice from them on how to use Facebook in their businesses. So that kind of free advice you give out, it really can turn into paid stuff as well. So you're not stuck with perpetually just giving away all your knowledge and getting no value back out of it yourself. Live tours became really big during the national lockdown last year when you couldn't go on um, you know, inspections of properties or you couldn't go and look at a rental property to see if it's um, the one you wanted to move into. So you had to go through these live tours that people would do. So they do a, a collection of people doing a live tour on Facebook Live, or it could have been a recorded tour of walking through that house and looking at the different things. Or even so, the um, using FaceTime or a video call of some description, the property manager could go into the property and walk around that property um, in a COVID safe manner and be able to broadcast that back to the person who was trying to watch that particular thing. So those things are actually very, very important. It could be a tour of not just a property, but of a restaurant, of a shared office facility, of a clinic that has a spare room that's ready to be rented out to another partner. Um, any of those things can be really, really important to be able to share on a live video as well. And then, just because we don't have enough ideas, you can look at um, other possibilities as well. So other possibilities can include, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Let me just uh, quickly dip this in the bud. Here we go. And sales and promotions are probably, um, you know, the one thing that people who are selling services who use live video probably use this the most. The ability to be able to do your sales, do your promotions, do your new products. I know with a lot of network marketing people, they will often look at new um, products that come down their network and go live to discuss what those new products are. Or in the case of, um, for instance, I'm in a team of people who resell mobile phones, uh, I'm sorry, mobile phone plans and MBN plans. And as part of that team, um, my manager, um, he, well, my, 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 my account manager, that is, gets on uh, live videos with me in a particular private group and several others who are in this group um, who are resellers of that particular company. And then we get the new information about the new mobile plans that are available, the new MBN plans or power saving plans or whatever it is that we're going to be able to do um, that we're introduced to those products uh, through a live video. And it's a much more effective way to do it than trying to get people uh, to just sign up for a webinar. Because as we know, webinars, 100 people could sign up. And this happens to me all the time. 100 people could sign up for a webinar. And because it's free, maybe about 20 people actually turn up because life happens. We get that. In a live video where you make it so that this is the only time you can get this information and it's not going to be recorded or provided, then it gives you a reason to move other things aside for people to do this. If they're engaged enough with your business, if they're engaged enough with your products and your services, they will make room for you. And those who don't, you've got other ways to reach those people if you need to. Remember, live video on all these platforms, it saves itself so you can use it again later. It didn't used to do it on Instagram, but now it does because Instagram's changed the way they've done on their video. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they all will save your live videos so you can use them later on to continue the journey for the customers or the clients or the partners or strategic partners that you didn't actually get on that call at that time. They can be on that call a little bit later on. Facebook actually has research in this and they've told us that basically a customer is seven times more likely to buy a product during a live video than during a produced video. That's a very big rise because a produced video isn't probably as, I guess, emotionally engaging. People aren't looking at it and going, you know what, <laughs> excuse me, I can't, I, you know, I, 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 I really like the passion in this recorded video. It's generally not like that. It tends to feel very fake, but when you're doing it live, it's very hard to be fake because people will see straight through it and you'll feel stupid doing it. So you'll tend to be much more yourself, which means human to human connection, meaning people are more likely to, again, know you, like you, and trust you to make that purchase. 
So let's have a flip through what the different live video platforms happen to be. Now there's the big elephant in the room that we all know is Facebook. It's the one that most live videos are done on today across the world. It's a big live video platform and it's all about basically, um, you know, businesses trying to share their products and services, people wanting to share the experiences they're having, um, live musicians wanting to share their live performances or teasers for their live performances a lot of the time. Some major recording artists will actually actually release a, a preview of what they're going to do in a live um, a little bit beforehand so they can lead through to that. Facebook is the biggest because probably because it's the biggest platform and they're the ones really you know, that, that made live video go mainstream. There was once upon a time a little platform called Meerkat um, that was a, an app that you could go live from on your phone and you could send out to people, but other people would have to be on Meerkat as well to be able to see that. It was then overtaken by Periscope, which was from Twitter. Now, Twitter just described uh, the, created this to basically have another way for people to go live. They've now shut down Periscope and it's now Twitter live video. So it's, um, it's a, really just a part of what they're doing, but it wasn't until it hit Facebook Facebook, but it really took off. So in Facebook, you can go live from a profile, your own personal profile. You can go live from your business page or any of your business pages. You can go live from a group to only broadcast the people inside that group, or you can go live on an event. So if you put an event in there, you can actually do a live event. And these days even take payments for live events. So you don't have to do everything for free. If it's a, if you're doing something which is particularly important and particularly expensive for you to set up and people want to um, you know, pay you $10 for access to that live video, then you can actually take that payment. It's all processed through um, either paying out to your bank account or through PayPal. I'd say do it through your bank account though, if you're going to do it, because you don't get extra fees, whereas PayPal often take extra fees in there. Up to eight hours of live video can be done on Facebook. That's actually wrong. It's actually up to 24 hours now. Um, it used to be eight hours. It's now 24. And up to two presenters at a time on Facebook. A little bit more though. You can do three on Instagram, funnily enough. But where Facebook and yes, Instagram as well, really differ themselves from the others is the interactive tools, the chat tools, the commenting tools, the ability to be able to plug in a fundraiser. So if you've set up a fundraiser for yourself or for a charity, you can then put that fundraiser and pin it into the live video so people can, as they're going through the live video, you know, you might remember the old telethons of the 80s and 90s where it was like a variety show and people like Bert Newton and um, Graham Kennedy and Ray Martin would get on there and they would, you know, drum up all this enthusiasm and there'd be variety performances and all that sort of thing, all to generate phone calls through the call center that would take a credit card and a payment for, as a donation to that particular charity. Well, you can do the same thing. You don't have to have a television station these days. You can do it from your Facebook page, group or event. Excellent interactive tools that allow people to do their um, donations from there. People, there's the ability for people to be able to buy and purchase products within a live video. So if you've got Facebook commerce manager set up with Facebook shopping, so you've got your, say your Shopify or your uh, big commerce uh, site all connected up through Facebook, people can then buy, actually buy that product right there on screen while they're watching the live video within the live video. So it's not just you have to point them off to a link, you just pin it into there. You go, okay, right now, here we go. Here's, I'm just going to add this product to the screen right now. We've only got 20 of these left. So really hurry up and buy these. They're now $29.95 and people can literally tap on that product, go to your website and check that out and buy it straight away. So it's a really effective way of doing things like that. When it comes to how to go live, the two places that are the most obvious are through, you know, if you're doing it through your um, profile, then at the very top of the app, under what's on your mind, you'll see live on the left, live photo and room. A room is the ability to be able to go live with um, like a, like a multi-person call, whereas live is going out to pretty much anyone that you set. So it can be a special group of people. It can be public. It can be private to yourself if you want to. Hey, there's nothing wrong with talking to yourself. Only the crazy people um, are the ones that got a problem about talking to themselves. And if you want to use Creator Studio as well, that's a really good tool that allows you to go live from the desktop um, and then create all the things you need to, whether that means you have to um, connect through to, I don't know, it could be going through to, um, to, to other areas. So you might be broadcasting out to third party uh, platforms. You might be uh, wanting to, you know, 
tie up um, interactions with other people and add new people to that call. You can do that from the desktop and from the, um, from the mobile as well. Another way to go live is, let's say you go to your page, under your page, it's on the right-hand side under the create post. So instead of photo or creating a story, you can go live from your business page as well. So that's an easy way to do it from the phone, from the desktop, pretty much much the same under create a post. The first option is to create a live. So you can do that from your desktop as well. Facebook's been really, really good at making it so you don't just have to do it on a phone, that you can do it from your desktop as well. Just be aware though, most people tend to watch lives on their phones. So going live from the desktop may be easy for you, but it may not be the best way for your people to view you. Because remember, uh, on desktop, you're going to be in that sort of 16 to 9 uh, letterbox format. So it's like the, the, um, the wide screen, right? And they're going to watch it on their mobile phones in a vertical screen up like this. So they'll be up this way whereas you'll be broadcasting that way. So the, um, the idea there is that you've got to make sure that you are broadcasting in the way that most people are going to receive that. But it's easy to go live for any of those things, your Facebook pages, profiles, groups, and events as well. Let's move on to number two, which is Instagram Live. Instagram Live came about quite a few years ago now, and it's been really, really popular with influencers who want to share their amazing moments. Although a lot of influencers like to edit their photos, so they don't like to share a lot of live video. But if they're influencers who are in the, the coaching and um, personal services, and if they're in... Um, e-commerce and marketing, then, you know, they're not really looking at making themselves look great. They're looking at making themselves known to more people. So what they'll use often is Instagram live to do that with Instagram live. It's great for product sales because just like Facebook, you can share all your products at different times and pin them to the live video so that you can tell people what to buy and when. And it's really good if you've got maybe um, you know, one of the most effective ways I've seen this, and it was through a terrible um, network marketing scheme that ripped a lot of people off called Lula Row. And um, I had a friend who was on there and, and showing me this live video that was running where this, this woman in America was sending, selling like a range of dresses and leggings that she only had like one off of each thing. She didn't have like a hundred different versions of it. She had like a I've got one of these in size 10, one of these in size 14, one of these in size 18. Um, and, and she'd be able to sell those like bang, bang, bang right during there. And she had the linked through not to her online shopping because that couldn't be connected through to that, that network marketing scheme. But it was able to be uh, her to go, okay, here's the product. Great. Okay. The person who said they'll buy this first was Jennifer. So Jennifer, yep, you've got it. I'll be in touch with you later. And she's jotting down Jennifer bought this down there or she could in this case her husband's actually there helping her out so she was doing the live video hubby is there taking all the information down and confirming who got what products then you've got your private public and up to three hosts able to be in there so when i say private you can create a small private group and just add in certain people to that particular sale or that particular live video you're doing or you can just go completely public so that anybody who follows you or is part of your account can just go, yep, okay, I get it. I can get this now. Um, and they are part of that live video with you. Then you can add up to three hosts. So it can be you and two other people in a live chat panel of sorts on Instagram. That's soon going to be coming to Facebook as well. And just like Facebook, there are excellent interactive tools that really make it simple for you to do things like adding fundraisers, adding donations, adding payments, adding connections through to your Shopify, your, your big commerce through Facebook and Instagram commerce manager. And then also to be able to you know, take note of what's going on, add comments yourself or have someone else there. So that you're talking to the camera perhaps, and then your business partner or one of your staff is sitting there and they're able to then go and jot down the details as things are moving along. How you go live in, who's that handsome fellow? But how to go live on Instagram is basically that you, and I hope this little video will repeat itself. You tap on the plus at the top to start something new. Down the bottom, post story reels are live. You choose live. And then you're just instantly in the live environment where you can start to put different things together to make that happen. Someone was taking lots of photos of sunsets last night, wasn't he? Such a beautiful night where I am last night. It was just lovely breeze down by the foreshore in the tropics eating a roast dinner, would you believe, at a park by the beach. It was just so nice. Not jealous at all, are you? 
in Twitter, uh, they got their own live video. They kind of one of the um, one of the pioneers of live video. Really, they were doing it before Facebook was doing it. But of course, Twitter doesn't have quite the following that Facebook does. So Twitter started off with Periscope, which they then folded into uh, Twitter Live Video. So in the Twitter case, uh, it's quite good for news this is where if I say for instance something's going on you're capturing it at the time and you go okay I'm going to go live on this on Twitter because a lot of news outlets and a lot of politicians a lot of government workers uh, tend to use Twitter to keep on top of what's going on because people do share it quite um, you know people who are on Twitter tend to be very community oriented and tend to be very news oriented. They want to know what's happening and when it's happening at the first chance of it happening. So they're very, very keen to make sure that um, people know what's going on. So it's a great place, for instance, if you've got something which is very newsworthy that you're doing. A, for instance, if you're involved in any sort of um, public demonstration or protest, uh, it's very good for covering those because um, your, your material can get picked up by news channels and whatnot to be able to be used as showing your your whatever your cause happens to be. It's also good for adding extra reach to your other live video. So a lot of third-party apps, things such as StreamYard or um, Restream, they've got the ability to be able to plug directly into Facebook video, Instagram video, YouTube video, and then use Twitter's API, which is just uh, basically like a software tunnel between two pieces software that otherwise wouldn't be compatible you can use twitter's live api to click through to these other places so if you had say the restream app and you were doing your live video on restream it could be going out to twitter facebook instagram um you know uh, YouTube all at the same time. So you've got multiple channels all receiving that at the same time. Although a warning before you do that, you don't get <coughs> excuse me all the interactive tools. So for instance, you can't watch the comments and interact to them. You can't pin um, products or anything like that through third-party tools. You have to do it all really through um, just, just talk and perhaps have another phone or another device that's logged into Facebook Live or Instagram Live. So you can then refer to those. So for instance, if you've got the setup like I do here in my home office, I've got my main uh, computer screen here and then two great big giant monitors there. I spread things out across there. So I can run different things over here for Facebook and Instagram Live. And over here, I can run YouTube Live and Twitch Live. And then down here is where I'm actually talking to, to be able to put that message out through one. Um, Twitter is seen as less sales oriented than Facebook uh, because it tends to be more issues and um, news related than Facebook, where Facebook can be very much a, a salesy platform where a lot of businesses are sharing things that, um, that they are selling with people who follow them because they believe in that brand or that business or that product or service. So how to go live on Twitter, you've got um, the app on the right, you so click on the, the feather. And then you go to hit the camera and then you can select live. And then you're in the program where you can actually start to go live right now. And you can add things like locations and you can add some, um, you know, a little where it says what's happening at the top. You're also able to type in a, uh, a, a caption of what's happening. You can do that on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, it's just really very, very simple. Twitter have made it remarkably simple for you to be able to do that. Uh, they're also allowing you to have things like, you know, a flash. So the, the, um, the, the, the light could shine on the thing that you're pointing at if you're doing a live video somewhere where it may be a little dark. Or the other way to do it, if you're doing from the desktop, is go through media.twitter.com where you can set yourself up as a live video producer and then go live from your laptop or from your computer in the comfort of your office or your studio, wherever you're doing it, rather than doing it on your phone. Although most people on Twitter, they do it through here. They click on the feather, they go through, they add all the details, they add the camera. The camera then opens up and allows you to go video capture on live, you're going live, and you can add the details in there and off you go with live video on Twitter as well. YouTube is a whole different ball game because they were pretty late to the live video game. Um, they've very much been about you producing video and uploading it rather than going live. But when they did get on it, it became a very powerful way of people doing how-to videos, demonstration videos, product demos, and a lot of educational stuff. <clears throat> so how uh, YouTube works, it's very, very good um, because it's, it's very what they call sticky. 
when it's got good description, good title and good tagging in it. So if you make it very, very clear in your title and your description, what this particular video is about, it can be very, very sticky um, and quite evergreen. I've got, um, you know, I often think, oh, this YouTube um, that I've done about uh, this particular, so for instance, this video we're seeing here is going to be cut down and put onto YouTube in about an hour's time. And I can look at that over the next few days and go, gee, it hasn't really got really much going on there. No one's really viewing it. But if I go back to a video that I put up 10 weeks ago and I can see it's got hundreds of views on it, I'm going, oh, wow. Okay, so it wasn't that useful really when it first went live, but it was really useful over a period of time. YouTube does tend to have this happen with it. It may not get, unless you've got a very big audience already on YouTube on your channel, but most small businesses don't, let's face it. But if you do, then you'll get potentially a lot of people watching you live. But that's not really how people use YouTube. People tend to use YouTube for stuff that they can watch on demand rather than live video. So it's very good if you do live video to understand that not everyone's going to be watching it live. Most people are going to be watching this afterwards. This, funnily enough, could be said a lot for things like Facebook and Instagram too. Instagram is very immediate and you're not likely to get a lot of a long tail of viewers after it. But Facebook does tend to get a lot of viewers afterwards, at least within the first few days. And it kind of disappears. YouTube just is the gift that keeps on giving. So you can do that and it may not peak until 12 weeks later. Or in some cases, the videos I've done six months later, it's like this video has taken a peak because it's got, it's got something in there that people are looking for. So it's really good for things that don't change overnight. So things that are about um, products and services and technology that isn't going to change in six months time, really good for putting in a live video like that and great for lessons and how-to videos. It's really the strength of YouTube is the ability for people to search it for how to do things. So how to go live on YouTube is that you get your screen up there in your channel. Um, your channel doesn't need to be showing. This is just um, what I what my screen is, my feed. Then you click click on the uh, the upload video or go live. And we're choosing go live, and it takes us into YouTube Studio. And YouTube Studio is going to come up any single moment now and show us what it's going to look like. There we go. So YouTube Studio and it allows us to stream webcam and manage videos that we've got going on. We can schedule our stream ahead of time or we can go live right now or just schedule it for another date. So it's a very, very simplified screen. You can do this also from the mobile app. Um, it's probably a little bit better on the mobile app, to be honest, because our mobile cameras are way better than our webcam. So I've got a particularly good webcam that I bought that sits above my screen my screen, I use an external webcam because it just, just works so much better. And if you're going live to talk to something, you want to look clear. You want to look bright. I've got a ring light there. I've got a lot of light coming through my window here. So I'm making sure that it's really easy to be able to see me and to be able to interact with me through the different, um, you know, through my gestures, through the, the, the connection that two humans can have when there's something live and local as well. Now, LinkedIn is a bit of a funny one. Because even though it's been active for well over a year now in live video, it's only been offered to certain people by invitation. So it's been a lot of influencers, a lot of um, people who have very large followings. I've got about two and a half thousand following me, which is great. It's not huge. It's not bad. It's very active. Um, but I've not been offered that invitation at all. But there's um, an Australian influencer on LinkedIn called uh, Sally Ellingworth. She's got live access and has had for nearly a year. And I think what, what it's doing is basically it's going to give us all that access, but it needs to be able to see whether they can scale it first. So hopefully that will come very shortly because I really, really would like to have access to LinkedIn Live because that's where most of my clients tend to be. It's very similar to Facebook. Facebook Live has got a lot of notifications, lets people know that you're about to go live or that you've scheduled a live through LinkedIn's events as well. Um, it's very, very much about, you know, professional networks So ideal for expertise in your particular industry and for any sort of industry updates you might have in there as well, where you're letting people know how things work or what the news is within your particular industry or your market segment or in your local market as well. Next one is Twitch. Now, Twitch is a very, very niche one. It's very, very popular in one particular segment of people, and that's gamers. Um, it's mostly a live streaming for gamers, though that said, they push themselves as a live streaming platform for creators. So even though it's for creators, 
I'd say probably about 95% of the creators on there are streaming their gaming. So they're talking, um, you know, and, and cover, they, they're streaming their, their screen of what they're gaming. So it's like a PlayStation or a PC or, a, or a, an Xbox or something like that. And then they are also got a camera that's on them. So they're inserted down the bottom corner and talking through what they're doing on this game incredibly popular it used to be big on youtube it's all sort of moved over to twitch now it's a great place to watch this kind of thing um, it's also popular with people now who are doing creation in the fandom so if they're not just doing video games they're going to things like comic-con or medieval fairs or things like that where there's some degree of interactivity that they can talk people through where they're going so if they're going to say um let's just say they're going to the echo the brisbane show or they're going to the royal perth show or something like that they can walk in and if their fandom is all about cattle and they're going in covering cattle now there's not a lot of people doing that it's mostly about gamers really so it's um really really hard to find an audience that's going to suit you as a small business if you're not gaming related but if you are somehow related to gaming or electronics this could be a really good place for you to be and the other elephant in the room is TikTok. TikTok is just um, a, a beast. And this thing has just got so much of the time that people are sinking into online video and, and digital video is going towards these guys. And with TikTok, the little bit, um, you know, you're not going to be able to just walk into TikTok and start going live. You do need to build a following. In fact, you need to have at least 1,000 followers before TikTok will then invite you to be able to do live streaming. So I think I've got about, 18 followers on TikTok and but I've had like tens of thousands of views but I've only got 18 followers so I'd need to do a lot of work to build up those following so which means a lot of entertainment and that's the problem I guess that while there is a potential for a really big audience on TikTok if you're not entertaining you're going to be unfollowed on that on mass it's, it's just not going to be able to either get that following or maintain that following um, no one's on TikTok to learn things. No one's on TikTok to um, be educated. No one's on TikTok to watch a talking head unless that person's really funny and really entertaining or is making faces or doing something that's entertaining people, not just informing them. So if you're not entertaining, you're probably not going to make much of an impact on TikTok. It's not the first place I go as a business because it's still new enough that we're still trying to work out how exactly to make this work, how exactly we're going to make this work. So we understand, I guess, you know, how people want to operate on TikTok. How do people want to be interacted with on TikTok and how they want to be entertained? And do they actually want to be educated? Because so far, the, the answer is no, they don't want to be. They just want to be entertaining, very bright, cheerful, short videos. So the long video of talking to a camera on TikTok is just not really making a huge way. It's about influencers who are already famous on that platform who are inviting you into something extra uh, because you're a super fan of theirs and you really, really want to see something that's either behind the scenes or in some way different to what normal people are seeing. So now we're going to talk about the plan. You want to get started on this video. You want to get started on, on going live and you've got your platforms. You kind of got an idea of where you start them out, but what do you, what do you do? Like, what do you actually talk about? How do you do it? So the plan usually has to involve getting some ideas from your followers and what they like. You can't just say, I've got this glasses case and I want to sell it today. Unless people are on your page or on your, your following um, because they like your products and they want to buy your products. So getting some ideas from your followers could be, hey, um, I'm thinking of doing some live video. What would you like to see in live videos? And you might get some ideas back from your followers saying, I'd love you to be able to show us how... Um, what size some of those products are because it's hard to tell from the website. And you go, oh, that's a great idea. Well, here's my little motivational calendar that I'm selling. So it's about this size and you can hold it in the hand and go, here it is beside my head. So you've got an idea of, okay, that's how it's going to look on the desk and how it's going to be. Um, or it could be that you want to say, okay, I'm selling these um, these little candles and they're in like little 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 jars, little little um little cans and so they're actually called like a can door because they're made out of um the fancy feast jars 
from <laughs> cat food. So if we're making all these, then um, this is how big they are sitting in your hand. So you've got an idea of the size of them. So you can bring them up to the camera, show it really close up so they can see, oh yeah, I can see what that looks like now or whether your nails are dirty or clean, mine are clean, thank goodness. And what that actually does look like. So you can do that sort of thing. Or your followers may say, you know what we really want to do? Just a Q&A because we've got like tons of support questions we want to ask. Can you do a Q&A? So get that idea from them. If you're not getting any ideas from your followers, you can just go live and just try something. And if no one follows, that's okay. The beauty of going live is that it's not something you do just as a one-off. This seems to be something you do kind of regularly. You kind of got to educate people into going live with you when you go live. I've, I know of a coach who lives in Catherine in the Northern Territory. Her name's Polly. And she does a lot of um, live videos every morning at 7 a.m. in Northern Territory time like clockwork even if she's sick she does it and if she's um in bed she'll do it she's never in bed though she always gets up early so she always looks immaculate at seven o'clock in the morning i don't know how she does it she just must get up at five to look that good so she gets up does that every morning and she's now developed her following for her live videos based on the fact that she probably had one or two people started off watching her in the beginning and now hundreds are watching her every morning for her morning motivation so just doing that little bit of and she's been doing it for about a year and a half now so it took her quite a while to build up that audience, but she just had to keep doing it. I want to do the same thing, but I just cannot seem to get that pattern of consistency in there. So it's, it's one of those things even I need to work on. Another thing to do in your planning for going there is pre-promote your live beforehand on Facebook. It's really easy. You just set it up as a, an event on Facebook and then you make it a live event. So that then it's linked through. So when you do go live, people who say they're going to come to this event will be reminded as you're going live that it's coming on. Pre-promoting that event means that people aren't just going to be going, oh, oh, she's going live. Oh, I better, oh, I might just go and watch that. But I've only got two minutes because I'm about to leave the house and go to work. Pre-promoting allows people the luxury of making time for you. It allows them to schedule in this thing so they know it's on, so they can put it in their calendars. Like I, I, I can't usually watch people's live videos when they're just doing it in the middle of the day. So I've got consultations, I've got webinars, I've got work to do. Um, but if there's something which I go, oh, I really, really want to see that from someone who I think is very, I admire a lot or who I really want to get more details out. It could be Simon Sinek. It could be um, you know, Brene Brown. It could be... Um, you know, and any of those amazing gurus that are out there teaching us stuff. Well, then the problem is I can't, I just have, I can't just like rock up on the day and go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I've got to plan that ahead. So pre-promoting your life gives people a chance to be able to make time to watch you. Then set up your environment. It's very important with me with my live webinars that I've got a controlled environment. So my housemate's not going to walk in because I'm doing them during the day and he's off at work at his other place. And then I've got the, the ring light that's ready there to keep my face nice and bright and focused. I've got my proper camera, my proper microphone, which wasn't working in the first half and thankfully did get some audio in there. And I've got everything I need to make this an engaging and educational experience for people. I've set up the environment that I've got enough control over it that I've got everything I need. And one of the important things things I need is to not have a lot of echo going. This is a big room with a high ceiling. So it echoes like crazy in here, um, but I've got enough software to be able to make that work for me. So if your environment requires that you need a, an external microphone, like I've got an external ring light, an external webcam, um, some software that take the calms down the external sound and make sure that all you can hear is my voice and none of the stuff like the, the noisy old air conditioner over there that's making a lot of noise today. Well, then you've got control over that environment and you can relax. It means that you're not worried about suddenly going off air. You're not worried about looking or sounding stupid. You know it's going to come across in the best possible way. Now do a practice run. There's the ability to do practice runs on Instagram Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. You can do practice runs to make sure your tech is all working. Even on Zoom, if you're doing a live video on Zoom, you can do a practice run and just go, okay, this is my practice shot. Let's see how I'm going. Oh yeah, it works really good. Everything's tested. Just make sure things are tested. Now, I didn't do my practice run this morning because I was running late. So I just had like a couple of minutes to go before I went live. So I didn't do my practice run to see that my microphone wasn't plugged in. It was only sort of half hanging out the back. So I had really bad audio for the first couple of minutes until I worked out, oh, wait a minute, I need to plug this in. And the good audio started kicking in. So if I had it done on my practice run, I would have seen that. I would have play it back and go, oh, no, that's not working the way I thought it would work. Next up. Choose the best time to go live. 
Um, Polly, she made it 7 a.m. on every single morning. But thanks for that, Kat. It wasn't that bad. That's good to know. I know that um, this is a lot more clear on this microphone. So I always like to have the clear microphone on there. Choose that best time to go live. 7 a.m. for Polly. It could be 10.30 a.m. when your people are ready to see you go live. Or it could be 6 p.m. on a Sunday evening before people um, are getting ready for their, their week ahead if they're a weekday worker. You need to get that idea from who your customers and your potential audience are, not when it's convenient for you. It sounds really bad because we need to squeeze these things in our lives, but our convenience is not necessarily our customer's convenience. So have a look at your Facebook insights and see when people in your page insights are mostly online within your audience. And it'll give you an idea. You go, hmm. Okay, if I find they're mostly on a Wednesday afternoon, well, then maybe I'll make time on a Wednesday afternoon to do my lives nice and consistently. Um, I'm trying to find my time at the moment and looking more likely that um, it could be like an early morning or a lunchtime thing that I would need to do if I'm going to do a daily live video. So I'm still working out the times to set up my one that I'm going to be doing in 2022. So I'm in no rush for it, but I just want to make sure they've got the right research about when the right time is to go live for my particular lot of people. And the other thing is too, that 5.30 PM at my time is about uh, 6.30, uh, sorry, 6 PM in Queensland and about 4 PM in Western Australia. And that seems to be, one of those sweet spots for when most people are available to attend these webinars. So I'm thinking that might be a great time to do my regular daily live videos as well. Ooh, coffee time. Reintroduce yourself during live because not everyone's on at the beginning. So that's a very, very um, clear thing that happens by all the very best people on live video. They get on live and they start talking, hey, my name is, and we're doing this, this, and this. And then as you see people drop in and say, hey, if you're just joining me, I am Dante, and I'm here to, um, we're, we're talking about this today. If you'd like to comment, please do the comment. Let's continue. And so you just let people know, um, obviously, like within about, 20 to 30 seconds of a clump of people dropping in, reintroduce yourself or do it every minute or so. So um, to a point, you don't have to do it right throughout the video until the very end. If you're doing an hour, you don't want to be doing this every minute because it'll annoy people. But just reintroduce yourself or what they call resetting the room on Clubhouse. Uh, if you want to be able to, um, you know, just let people know who you are and what this particular live video is about. Otherwise, if they don't hear that, very early in for them dropping in, they'll drop into something which they feel like they haven't got the full context of and that they don't really understand what's going on and they'll just click back off again. Respond where you're able to. Now, as I said before, if you're using third-party tools like StreamYard or Restream, you're not going to be able to do this because it doesn't tie into the, the, the chat or the comments that you do on things like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. You'll have to respond just where you're able to. If it's on Instagram or Facebook, um, one of the ways you can do that is you can have your going live on a camera phone that's sitting up in front of you in your ring light, perhaps, and then you've got your desktop where you're actually logging into the desktop to be able to handle the comments. So you can handle those comments while you're doing it. But responding doesn't have to be typed. In fact, in most cases, it won't be. In most cases, it'd be like what I was responding to Kat before. It was saying, okay, um, uh, thanks, Kat, for that. Or um, yeah, thank you for saying those great points or it wasn't that bad. Responding live to when those comments come up. So for me, it's over on this right-hand um, uh, monitor of mine. And on the left-hand monitor, I've got all my analytics going on, telling me what's going on with the feed. And then my slides are down here. So I can look up there and quite easily just go, oh, I can refer to Kat saying hi or Jennifer saying hi or Matthew saying hi or, um, or uh, Carlos is saying hi as well. So I can respond to people in that way. So responding doesn't have to be typing. In fact, it's better if it's live and done verbally to the camera. And I would say really all the time, be clear and be yourself. Trying to be clever with word plays and jokes and comedy if you're not naturally funny. Um, you know, there's a point where dad jokes are funny because they're not funny. Um, and there's a point where you say so many dad jokes that it just doesn't become funny at all. If you're not a naturally funny person, don't try to fake yourself being funny. People don't always just like funny people. They like serious people. They like friendly people. They like perky people. They like people who are monotone. They like people who gesture a lot or people who don't gesture a lot. It's just more important to be yourself. So if you're someone who is very polished and very professional, then be polished and professional. But if you're not, if you're a little bit bogan and you're a little bit, and you occasionally drop a, uh, an F-bomb in your, in your talks, 
just be yourself. Like try not to swear because you don't want your um, explicit rating to be pulled up on that video and you don't want to be brought down by the platforms. But at the same time, you know, just be you. Don't pretend to be anyone other than who you are. I bring back Polly again as that coach I was talking about earlier. She's a bit bogue. She's a little bit bogan. She's not, she's not going to take any sort of um, offense to that. Um, so she brings that to her live video. She's just a mum who lives in the, in the outback and grew up in the outback. And naturally, she's not going to sound like an inner city cafe latte um, swilling uh, professional from a high rise office block in Sydney. So that's not who she is. She's just a mum who's a bit of a bogan, likes to go fishing and camping um, with the family. And so she brings that into her live videos as well, even though she looks absolutely stunning as well. How she does it, I do not know. And then you need to have this plan. You have to have a plan of attack going into your live video. So what is that plan? How exactly do you plan for your live video? Well, how you do it is first of all, you've got to figure out how you're going to start, how you're going to come into your video. So this is where you work out how long are you just going to be introducing yourself and going, oh, hi there to um, you know, Genevieve. Hello there to, um, to, to Carlos, I can see he's jumped in and Matthew and Peter and, and Jill, I see she's dropped in as well. And how long that's going to go on for until you actually start the main part of your live. Some people will in indicate that you should last about five minutes. But honestly, if I got in early and I was watching five minutes of high, 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 I get really jack of that. And I just go, oh, shut up. And then I'd want to drop out unless there's something I'm doing in the background. If I'm watching specifically for this and I want the information, I want the information. I don't want to sit through you welcoming 250 people just to get there. But at the same time, you need to leave a couple of minutes in that beginning to give people a chance to get in. So they're just seeing the, uh, the login or they're just seeing the, uh, the notification on their phones or they're just seeing the notification on the desktop. It might take them a minute or two to be able to get into that live or in a position where they can watch the live, where they're away from noise or they're trying to get a space to themselves to be able to watch it. So a couple of minutes should be enough of how you do that start, but plan that start. Give yourself that two minutes and say, we're going to start in two minutes. And on that two minutes, you go, great. I've got a few people in here now. Let's get started. When the others can catch up as they drop in. Otherwise, you don't want to be peeing off the people who have been in there from the very beginning because they'll get really, really angry that all you're doing is constantly introducing yourself and saying hello to people. It just feels really dumb. Secondly, have some main points. List your main points on a piece of paper or have them on screen to make sure you're actually going to address them. So what are the three? And I like to have three main points. I want to go, cover this. I want to cover this. And I want to cover this. So if you've got a product, say, for instance, we'll go back to our cat tin candles and say, okay, I'm going to talk about, um, you know, recycling and how important it is to be able to recycle as many things we can either into other other uses or to send back off to be made into other things from scratch um, i like to support homemade and handmade so i'm going to talk for a while about homemade and handmade and then i'm going to introduce my product and say this is a little product i found which i thought was absolutely amazing that someone was able to make soy wax candles that smell like lemon myrtle no, it's just lemon scent. Yeah, lemon myrtle. Um, and that it's all able to be done um, in an old cat food tin that's been cleaned out and sterilized. What a fantastic idea. That could be the three main points that I make on my particular live. So list those main points on a piece of paper or on screen to make sure that you cover them. And finally, understand how you're going to get out of the call. It's, um, it's, it's quite often amusing to watch live videos when people have gone, okay, I've got through my main point. How do I end this? Um, bye. Have some kind of ending. At the end of all my videos on here, you'll always see, and I'll see you in the next one of these webinars. And that's how I end everything. It's a good way for me to go, that's the end. That's time for me to get out. Bang, hit the end button. So have some kind of prepared ending that includes what to do next. In my case, I go, and I hope to see you in the next one of these webinars. But I also take them through the ending, which you'll see very shortly, of how to get more value out of this digital solutions program. So have some way of pointing people to your website, your Facebook profile, your online store, to so your coaching presentations and services, some way for people to go out of this video and then do something else with you. So what's next? 
Uh, you can feel I'm starting to come to the end because I'm now starting to introduce the things you can do to get help, which is through the Digital Solutions Program. If you have joined it um, as a, for one-to-one -one advisory, you can get three hours of one-to-one -one with myself or any of the other amazing uh, presenters and advisors. And then as much workshop and webinar as you like, at least four hours would be good, but have, do more if you want. It's all up to 44 bucks, give you access to everything, including an online learning platform where you can learn everything from how to use Excel, through to how to set up your email, through to how to better use your phone. It's amazing value, 44 bucks. And that's it. That's it. No more. And I'll give you a year's access to all this. So go to businessstation.com.au to get a bit more access to all of that. And if you'd like to reach out to me, by all means, do so at Dante at clickstarter.com.au or you can find me on LinkedIn, which is probably the best place to find me. It just seems to be the place that I am the most responsive. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are fine too. So if you want to say day to me, please do say day. Um, in the meantime, though, I really encourage you to go out there and, and view more of these webinars on YouTube and book for more of them live as well. So you can interact, ask questions along the way and do all that as well. I thank you so much for taking time out of your business to spend time on your business and I hope to see you in the next one of these webinars. See, I told you I'd do it at the end. It's what I do. Then I poke around the corner, see my end button and say, bye.